thank you very much for inviting me to this inspirational conference. And um, um, I'm really ashamed that I would have come to, um, to participate in all of it. Um, what I'd like to present today is the um, a, a, a quick look at the social changes that are now taking place in in Poland uh, due to the changes in something which we can call sexual contact and the vision of the gender relations at home and in the workplace, um, especially in the uh, uh, in this dimension of, of social policy. So briefly, I'd like to talk a bit about uh, in Poland was always very celebrated in culture, but quite unsupported in social policy and in everyday life. So uh, the vision of modern Poland was constructed in the 19th century during the hard political times for Poland, when the mother was responsible for all the household duties, but also uh, presented a very sacrificing model of motherhood presenting herself as lacking her personal needs and sacrificing everything for her children and not more needing anything, anything else. So um, this cultural pattern is, um, um, is every now and then revived uh, to uh, give an explanation for, for example, cuts in social policy because there is this vision that Polish mothers will, uh, um, will be um, um, uh, will not need any support from the state because they, they are just for their children and uh, no uh, social policy institutions uh, um, are needed uh, in this situation. So, um, if we look what we, what, what happened in uh, um, during the economy and political transformation in the 1990s in Poland, we can see that there, there was a combination between this very traditional cultural, social cultural pattern of father as a breadwinner, not engaged in uh, family issues, and mother as a mother Paul, who was uh, on definitely focused on family issues, on household issues, and not very much interested in economic activity. Uh, this, well, this, this traditional visions were an explanation for, so, for the financial cuts and social policy which were introduced in the early 90s uh, due to the economic transformation due to the international Money fund, uh, monetary fund, which was um, well, imposing some kind of economic transformation scenario in Poland. Um, and the social policy was perceived in this scenario as a burden. So uh, those traditional visions of mother Paul were, were very useful to explain the social class. Therefore, if we look at what happened in the 90s, um, first of all, all local governments were seeking the newly introduced level of government. The local governments were seeking for um, for savings. Therefore, they, they they started to close the public nurseries, which was the easiest way to find some savings, as because they could all, all always refer to the traditional vision of mother who stays at home with her young children. Then. First there was nurseries, then there was kindergartens. Um, so all those institutions that were built during the, the communist times were suddenly perceived as communist and uh, not appropriate for the new, uh, new, however traditional Polish society. Uh, so what were the demographic effects of, of this policy? Dramatic decrease in fertility rates um, because it, in 1989 the fertility rate was um, uh, what we can see um, 
was about two, and um, after 10 years, it dropped to uh, 1.4. So uh, it's quite interesting that uh, those traditional visions are very restricted, very restrictive anti-abortion right, very uh, low access to sexual education, low access to cheap uh, contraception, actually resulted in uh, significant significant drop in fertility rate. Um, on, on the other hand, uh, if we look what happened to the children who, who were born, uh, uh, Poland reached the, the lowest numbers in, in, in case of uh, children who were attending nurseries and in the present, so only 2% of children between 0 and 2 years uh, attended nurseries, uh, and about uh, less than 40% attended kindergartens, which made us uh, very significant on the European map. Um, what was uh, what was the result for women? For uh, um, what, what were the results for women of this policy? Um, well, I think we can now, after those 20 years, we may say that it was quite disastrous because young uh, women who could be mothers, who, who pr probably would, would be mothers, were excluded from the labor market because um, of the lack of uh, childcare facilities and the three-year unpaid parental leave, employers would perceive them as not promising because if, if they were pregnant, they would disappear from the labor market for, for a longer time. On the other hand, the unpaid parental leave was making um, um, the women's situation very difficult because they were losing the economy independence and their material support. Um, so the, the shadow economy was very much expanded. First of all, uh, nannies who were, who were and still are working quite illegally, and the uh, grandmothers who uh, were who were pushing up, who were being pushed, pushed out from the labor market and uh, expected, yeah, um, and were expected to take care of their grandchildren. Um, so this is quite a grim, quite a grim um, uh, picture. But on the other hand, if we look what happened in the 90s and two, years 2000 in Poland, we can see a social change and the new expect new demands from the sometimes younger generation, sometimes the middle generation. If we can see that in um, in public research, in, in, in social opinion research. More and people, more and more people were, were declaring that they want to share their household duties, that they want to have a partnership in their relations, and uh, and they want to share the care of children. And year after year, especially um, around the um, EU accession, uh, the discussions about the new gender model, the new gender model, the new sexual contract uh, appeared. Uh, so I would say that there is kind of a bottom-up pressure from people uh, up to the, 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 the policy making um, about the, the new institutions in social policy that would enable women to be more active on the labor market and to, to introduce fathers to the family life. Um, the first discussions about paternity leave were quite um, uh, were quite funny actually, because on one hand this was the um, the idea of women's movement, uh, very much inspired by the Scandinavian solutions, but on the other hand the discussions were usually ended up uh, as saying that the pa fathers would use the paternity leave to go fishing or for an extra holiday because some of the politicians or the journalists could not think about uh, fathers actually taking care of the newborn children. Um, however, years after years, these discussions started to be more and more meritorious and, uh, uh, and well, adequate to, to what the, to the society demands. And suddenly, 
mean, really, we are quite perceived as a com quite conservative Catholic country, and suddenly in 2010, the government decided to give a chance to paternity leave, and they introduced one week of paternity leave, which is, well, it's not a big thing, but uh, it's, if we look at the, from the, um, um, from the, from the other hand, uh, it, 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 it's something completely new if we look at the traditional image of fatherhood and motherhood. So, um, it was introduced, but, uh, and then since, since this year it's two weeks full time, four people have had employment contract. Um, and it cannot be rejected, so employers cannot say that they don't have, they, they, they don't ask their, their employee to get to have the paternity leave. However, it was not advertised, so the first year was quite confusing because some fathers didn't know that they are entitled to to take this additional one week. Some of them were rejected by employers. Um, but uh, this year, a new thing happened, and uh, um, some of the um, um, a part of members of the parliament uh, introduced a new idea to extend it up to eight weeks. So um, it's hard to say if it will be introduced in next year, but we can see that the, the dynamic in, of change, of the discussion of the role of the father, which is quite amazing, uh, that suddenly the, the nappies and the, the milk and all those things that were usually associated, associated with femininity and motherhood turn out to be quite a manly issue. Uh, uh, the, the other uh, new institution, um, which was introduced last year, was introduced by the Nursery Act, uh, which was um, an answer for um, women's activity on the labor market. So again, suddenly after 20 years of repeating that the, the young mother is, place is, is at home because she has to take care of her children up until they, they reach the kindergarten age, uh, th this vision was changed due to the uh, strategy 2030, which is the governmental strategy, which is very much focused on the labor market demands. And uh, the, the, the main vision of the governmental strategy is to um, introduce more and more women and treat them as a labor force and not as a tribal carers. So, um, well, the strategy the, the 2030 strategy um, is quite interesting because there, is, there are new solutions for the child care, but there is nothing about the elderly care, like the elderly care did not exist. Uh, but, well, this is a subject for other discussion. However, what, the, what was new in the uh, Nursery Act, first of all, it, it, well, it enables building and so it enables co-financing, giving money to the local government to build, build more nurseries, which is a big change in the discussion about the nurseries. Second, it introduces a new form of care, which is the day carer. And this is an option for, for example, mothers who want to stay at home with their children and take care of the other children as well. And then there is a form of, um, um, of there's a, an option to, to make the, the work of nannies legal. So they are offered uh, something which is called activation contract and uh, the, the state pays for uh, their social security. Uh, so this is, and as many nannies who were working in the shadow economy were saying that they, they feel quite insecure that because they are working but they are not, they don't have any health insurance or social security. So this was um, um, this was quite a good idea. After one year, we can sum up some of the first uh, effects of the Nursery Act. Uh, unfortunately, for the first for the first half of the year, only 20 people in Poland applied to be the daycare, which is well not impressive. Um, however, again. 
the, the, the act was introduced, but it was not advertised. The local governments did not inform people that there is this option that you can actually take up the role and, and the job of, home, uh, of the child carer, the day day carer. Um, some of the nannies decided to, uh, and the families, the, the parents decided to uh, sign the, 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 the activation contract, however, um, it was in Warsaw, it was about 2000, uh, probably there are much more nannies who still work without any contract. But the, the nurseries um, uh, and the co-financing for local governments turned out to be the biggest problem because the state promised to finance 50% of the costs of the new nurseries. So, well, as the local governments did not have any money for this, and even 50% for this, they started to look for money in the wallets of parents whose children were in the kindergartens and nurseries. So, because there are still a few nurseries in Warsaw, for example, or in, in the other big city, and the fees rose for more than 100% in this, uh, well, probably it was the easiest way, but it was quite scandalous. So, um, after a year, the, the, the effects were quite obvious. However, when, when I was invited to this conference, I thought that this would be the last, last sentence uh, of my presentation, but our Prime Minister um, revealed his plans for the uh, family policy last week, and uh, mm, he, he made a, uh, quite a change in the philosophy of combating the crisis, because he said that now it's time for more investments and less austerity measures. So, and one of the, the pillars of this policy is the family policy. So, his idea is to introduce longer maternity leave, full paid or almost full paid, which can be shared with others. And, um, and definitely, definitely several times bigger money for kindergartens and for nurseries. So, now it's been intensively debated whether it's just a political game or perhaps it's just the first time in our history of the, well, after 1989 that somebody decided not to not treat the social policy and family policy as a cost or as a burden but, but as an investment. So, well, perhaps next year I would have <laughs> I would have more to say about uh, the new um, whether this money showed up or not. Um, however, uh, what um, perhaps I didn't provide much uh, percentages or statistics, but um, I think the, the time is too uh, too short to, to provide them. The, the thing is, the most key the thing is the. the the big change in the discourse concerning the role of mother, the activity of mother, and the role of father in the family, and not just the direct owner. Thank you.